and there we go. We have these installed and ready to go. That brings us right to 2.6.2, which is installing the gantry right up into the uh, frame itself. Now, before we do that, let's go ahead and remove the plastic from this axis. We don't want to get that bound up into the bearings. We're also going to need to get some more hardware from our bag or box G. All right. 2.6.2, we're gonna install the gantry up into our frame. So we're gonna need some of that hardware we talked about uh, and some tools. So a 12 millimeter wrench, two millimeter hex, our uh, 153 screws that we've already been utilizing and our uh, 140 nuts, uh, which go right here on the end of the brass uh, deals. Before we go ahead and jump and throw this gantry in there, let's go ahead and talk about the gantry. Uh, it uses double ball bearing support on the Y axis on both sides, both dual inner uh, rails. Has uh, tri-rail support on here with a total of six bearings for our uh, extrusion head. Now included in here on the bottom right here is our extrusion head. We have a wire uh, coming out, which is for the heater as well as the temperature sensor. Reason we need the temperature sensor is because uh, different plastic has different temperature that needs to be controlled via the controller on this, whether it be PLA or ABS. So that sensor gives feedback or information to the computer uh, of the known temperature and it maintains that using a PID loop. Now on the back side here, it has a cooling fan, and we're gonna be talking about this uh, a little bit later, but right in here and right in here, these are the adjustment points for our belt. We've got a belting system that runs right in here, and we're gonna be talking about these points right here. But while I have it open, I want you guys to be able to get a nice close shot with it out. Uh, these are the adjustment points. I'm gonna be talking about adjusting this to the open extent. What I'm talking about is taking this little screw and adjusting it so that this block rotates all the way to the back so it opens up the furthest distance apart. And that's gonna allow us to tension the belt later on. And, and I'll show it in that, but just so you can see it, then we're open right in here. On the front side, this is what adjusts and tensions the filament as it comes through so there's no slipping as it's uh, put through the extrusion head itself. Now installing it into the frame because it's a tight tolerance when these are in the upright position right in here. It's easiest to slide this in from the back lining up uh, the two raw, uh, plastic mounts into their side and then bringing the front on down and lining it up. If you try to install it with these flipped inwards, it's gonna be very difficult to flip them around and spread this plastic open to get them in. So you gotta kinda put it in with these uh, sides open. If you got uh, someone that can help you out, it would definitely help in this uh, process, but it's not necessary. Uh, I'm able to do it uh, by myself and I'm doing it backwards, so it's really awkward for me. So let's go ahead and get it up in there. So I'm just gonna kinda generally set it into place. I'm gonna push these blocks to the rear and I'm going to sweep them up, just letting the front kind of just hold itself up. Slide these down till it lines up and install that back and install that back. I'm going to lift this up Turn these blocks to face where they would be threaded into the plastic. And there we go, we've got it basically in place. So I'm going to just rotate this around so you can see. So these uh, little brass uh, nuts are sticking through the acrylic onto those holes. And then these side points that I was uh, uh, shifting around, they have mount points rated right in here where they attach right on there. So all we really need to do is install the hardware at this point, which we had just talked about. Now, this is uh, leaning against the plastic and the acrylic, so don't make any uh, huge impacts or drop anything on it or twist it. You could crack it out at this point. So you want to get this supported as soon as possible. Just on the back side, go ahead and take two of your nuts, and for the time being, just go ahead and tighten them up by hand. And then the most critical is getting some screws into the front support. So these are our uh, 153s and our two millimeter hex. I'm gonna go ahead and just drop one screw on this side. Rotate this around and do the same over here. There we go. Now this is being uh, well supported. At this point, we can go ahead and put in the rest of our hardware and getting it tightened up. All right, so now that I've got the hardware installed into the, the sides on these rails, I'm gonna go ahead and just give these a snug on these particular ones. 
And uh, the, the nuts on the back, we're actually gonna leave a little bit loose because we're gonna do some tramming. Basically, we've left a lot of hardware loose onto these sides. You can see these, these side plates and all around. Now that these rails are in, the defined dimension between here off of these rails is pretty much predetermined. And we're able to slide this back and forth and we can see how easily it glides back and forth on this. We wanna maintain uh, close to this amount of drag. If we start squeezing in these sides and things like this, it's going to uh, jam and put tension onto these bearings. So uh, that's exactly what this process is going to do, is go ahead and tighten it, this up where it still finds this nice happy medium. So let's go ahead and go through the process that's in the manual itself. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and tighten up our, our side bolts themselves that we left loose. So I'm gonna go ahead and clamp these on down. Okay, I'm gonna rotate it to the other side and uh, tighten up those same bolts that I did all along the side and the, the, uh, the bottom. Okay, now that I'm done with that, we need to tighten up these back bolts right in here. So what we've done is pulled these plastic blocks nice and tight up against these side panels. So now that found where these need to ride for this to slide back and forth freely. So we'll just tighten this up against this back panel and it'll maintain that distance right on there. Uh, just as a, as a note, what I would do is slide this all the way to the rear because that'll hold that position much better than if it's out here, it has a little more torque on it. So we'll just slide that to the rear. Tighten those up with the 2.5. And lastly, we're going to tighten up the nuts on the blast uh, rods right up here as our last step. Right there. Now what we wanna do is just grab this gantry, make sure it still feels nice and smooth and rolls back and forth. There are some adjustment points on this. If, if we have an issue where after we've tightened everything up uh, and it's tight, you can either loosen these up and redo that process to make sure it finds this nice smooth center right in there. But if you just can't find it, this dimension is, is just off for some reason or you accidentally dropped this head and it got pushed in. Uh, these rods are adjustable inside these bushings right in here. There are set screws on all of these that you can go up in here and loosen them up, which allows these to actually slide in and out on these rails. And what you can do is go ahead and loosen those. There is a process in the manual itself that shows uh, those points that can be loosened. And then you can take these and slide them in and out. You can kind of flex the sides in and out to find this nice, smooth, happy median. And then just go ahead and lock those up. It absolutely should not be necessary, but if in case uh, you're not getting that nice, smooth action, you can absolutely do that.